Our center, the Road Ecology Center, studies wildlife movement, uh, impacts of transportation on ecosystems, impacts of ecosystem on transportation, which is a new one, and that's basically sea level rise impacts on shoreline infrastructure, which is a reciprocal relationship on the shoreline where sea level rise impacts ecosystems and they impact shoreline infrastructure and so on. We want to think that we can be sustainable in a lot of different ways, uh, energy use, um, building um, on landscapes, and transportation. The measurement system for ecologically sustainable transportation is road ecology. Basically, it's the study of impacts of transportation systems and it's tied also to how can we resolve these. Our transportation development system and, uh, and use of the system uh, potentially could impact a lot of different aspects of nature and human communities, but I'll focus mostly on nature today. And then there's this connectivity or fragmentation effect uh, where populations are separated. And so you can think of this as a, like a city. In a city, if you have busy streets and freeways, if you don't have crosswalks, underpasses under the highway, or at least ones that you don't want to go through, uh, then you're not, you don't know the neighborhood on the other side. The corollary to fragmentation is connectivity. This is desired by you all uh, with the phone in your pocket, and this is desired by wildlife as well to be able to move across landscapes, to mate, to eat, uh, something smaller than them. Most transportation mitigation uh, projects that take place for wildlife involve trying to resolve fragmentation. Really we should be focused on preventing mortality as the most important ecological impact rather than retaining connectivity. In other words, engineering something um, for animals to get from one side of the road to the other. So these are for wildlife that don't have an aversion to the road necessarily or their aversion is low. Uh, they can go through different structures. This might be built for wildlife. There's also a human impact. I mentioned that CHP uh, has um, d records, oh, well they record, record all incidents and we collect all of those, about 800,000 a year, uh, which we put in a database which we're happy to share with anybody who wants to study traffic impacts in general. But we call from those all the ones related to wildlife. Animals are going to move around everywhere they feel like it and that they can and we always, don't always know where that's going to be. In this case, we can tell where it was, and hopefully that's a prediction of where it's going to be in the future, and maybe if you did something about it in these red areas, you'd reduce the chance of impact. If you don't collect the data in the first place, you're never going to get to the end of the workflow. And this is where we find the most problem with environmental data collection, is just not collecting the data. Uh, this has been true in the oil industry, tobacco for health, pharmaceuticals for health, sugar for health, and agriculture for primarily environmental impacts. If you don't collect the data in the first place, and certainly if you don't assess the impacts, there's no way to rationalize mitigating the impacts.